Welcome, everybody. I'm glad to have with me today Renee Avery. And Renee, I had somebody to ask me recently. They said, who is this Renee woman? You always say Renee. You never say her last name. So I throwed her last name out. But I did tell this lady, I said, she's kind of like Cher. You know, Cher is <laughs> One word Cher. <laughs> you know, Prince, Prince. we got something big coming up. We're here to promote a special event, uh, part of our Suicide Coalition. And it's entitled, A Letter to My Brother. Tell me about that. Voices of Hope is a suicide prevention coalition here in the Dublin Lawrence area. Um, there's many, many community members on our in this collaborative, and actually, it started off with a hairdo. You know, COVID has messed up our hair. Yeah, I started that. So. A lot of women and men have walked around <laughs> looking shaggy, um, and so Miss Elise Tapley, who is one of our members of the coalition, she's very active, been forever. Mm -hmm. um, was getting her hair done, talking to her hairdresser, and um, just happened to get on the topic of suicide, um, which is kind of a stigmatized topic. We don't talk about that. It's hush-hush. It's embarrassing. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's just coincidental. It was actually God's grace Amen. that um, Elise Tapley was sitting in that lady's chair getting her hair done. And the lady started talking about how um, it's time. It's time for me to start sharing my story. It's time for me to start saying what's going on um, with what's happened in my life. Mm -hmm. And so we are excited and we've built a relationship with Jessica Brown. And um, she is excited to share her story about how her brother has attempted suicide. It's been about three years. Mm -hmm. And um, how it's affected her. How it's affected her family. How it's affected his children. Um, and... She has a message to share with the community. So it was just co so coincidental that Elise was sitting there and she said, I'm going to help you get your story out. Yeah. So we have an event coming up on December 6th at 6 o'clock at the VA campus. The VA is going to let us use their campus. It's going to be COVID friendly, kind of like our car rally. You're going to be able to come in and drive in, tune in on your radio, mm -hmm. and just it's going to be about an hour we're not making it a big deal but she does want to share her story she has a video to show um it is bring some kleenexes um but when we started thinking about that we, our voices of hope suicide prevention coalition um has decided this year and you know covid put a mm -hmm. wrench in everything to focus on men because men are six times more successful with suicide than women mm. Um, and men, middle-aged white men, are the most um, successful with suicide also. So this year was a project to focus on men. Um, we've got yard signs out in the yards, Voices of Hope. We see you. We hear you. You're irreplaceable. Mm -hmm. um, you're a great dad. So we've started doing that. And then when Jessica said she wanted to share a story about her brother, and then he has kids, we also have a, um, another community member, his name's Roger Pittman. He's going to share his story because he's a survivor himself. He attempted suicide, and he is so thankful. Um, if you know this guy and you see him walking down the streets, he shines. Mm -hmm. He is so thankful that he didn't make that instant decision and that he was able to survive. And he's a father. He works in our community. He changes people's lives every day. So he's going to share a story. And we're going to have... Um, <coughs> Moy Sanchez is going to be there. He's going to be the, some of the spiritual background for us and um, have, make sure that the spiritual and the clinical part is addressed. So we're going to have counselors there. We're going to have um, spiritual um, men in positions to help. And um, maybe we can just get rid of the stigma and save somebody's yeah, lives. It's, uh, it's tough. It is. And men are proud. We're proud by nature. Uh, and we feel like you maybe a failure as a father or a husband or, or, or whatever, but uh, I know suicide first touched my life. It was April 1974, and my best friend's dad had killed himself. And I remember sitting on the steps at the gym as a 13-year-old boy listening to my best friend ask questions like, why did daddy do this? Why did my daddy leave us? Why did, you know, why, why, why? And as a 13-year-old, well, heck, as a 60-year-old, I don't have the answer. So yeah. I sure didn't have them as a 13-year-old. But it does affect our lives. And I can tell you it was April 14th, 1974. You never forget those moments, even though that's been 
while so long ago, but um, uh, and I had a service manager work for me for years. He killed himself, and about a year later, his son killed himself. And you know, as as men, we leave uh, our children and grandchildren legacies on how we handle things. And if we commit suicide, we also leave that legacy in this situation where his son committed suicide. So we have to think about those things. And you're not a failure as long as you're trying. Right. Uh, and we know, you mentioned a moment ago, uh, it was God's grace that, that uh, put Elise and, and this woman together. Mm -hmm. It's God's grace that sees us through these times too. So, And there is help in the community. Uh, there's help for you. There's help here at the Community Service Board of Middle Georgia. Uh, there's... Um, you know, and Renee, uh, ever since we went through our school last year, uh, and the name was uh, Suicide Assist Training, is that, am yep. I saying it right? Mm -hmm. We went through a two-day training here in Orange County, I think in February, seems like, wow, it's been almost a year, but, yep. um, you know, I, I, I listened to that and, and thought about it, and ever since then, every pastor I come in contact with, I asked that pastor, I said, what would you do if a member or somebody in the community come to you and said they were going to commit suicide? Ten out of ten pastors, ten out of ten, I'm telling y'all, and I ask everybody this, tells me I don't know what to do. In seminary, they did not train me right. about what to do. So we're not trained. The people on the front lines aren't trained. we got to do a better job, and that's why we have training like we had last February, and hopefully... Uh, we can have another one soon uh, to train other people. But uh, why do you think you work for uh, Community Service Board of Middle Georgia? Why aren't we trained better? Because of the stigma. That's my answer. Um, people don't want to talk about it. People want to brush it under the rug, just like mental health. It's not something that we talk about. We're not proud. It's embarrassing. Um, we just take our pills and hope we get through the day. But um, we do have education. There is a hotline, a simple number that nobody needs to know. Mm -hmm. Nobody has to know. You can call that number, get in touch with the right people. Um, we can put the suicide hotline number on the screen. You can see that. Anybody can call. It, even the, via, the vets can call the same number and it takes them straight to the same um, support. Um, but we can, we can, and that's part of Renee's goal um, working in this area is to help people learn how to handle those situations. So we do have this this training. It's a two-day training and even and a free two-day training. Yeah. Um, but even more than that, we have what's called QPR. It's a question, persuade, refer. And I can teach the class and it's a more condensed one hour training if need be. I can do it for an hour and a half. So any pastor watching or frontline person yeah. that wants to know, they could contact you. And we're going to leave those numbers on the screen for you yeah. while we talk. But they could call you and set that up. Yeah, free. I can come in for your staff meetings, your Sunday school classes, um, your quarterly, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, any kind of group of people we've done as small as 10 or 12 people to 30 people for the classes and it's free and it's just um how do you approach somebody what are the signs what do you say what do you not say mm -hmm. do you know the resources in your community to get the help that you need it's just really it's just that simple and the whole purpose of this event that's coming up is to try to get people comfortable enough to talk about mm -hmm. it it's not something that should be embarrassing if somebody needs your help help them yeah. Um, people get so worked up in life and things get so stressful, especially men, mm -hmm. um, that we don't think straight. That's right. Sometimes it's just a sit down, let me give you Talk my attention. Talk through it. That's right. Listen to you and help mm -hmm. make a good, sound decision. Yeah. Um, we can make a difference. And uh, just listen, I'm, this is crazy. I will give you chill bumps. But just this past two or three weeks that we've been talking about doing this and working on the event, we put flyers out, we put signs out. And while we put signs out, there have been circumstances or situations happen to where as we're putting the sign out, a man comes up and talks to us. One man came up and said, my mom and my dad has recently died. Mm -hmm. Back to back. He said, I didn't even know if I was going to come in today. And here you are putting this up. And he said to us, it's no coincidence that yeah. we're talking right now. Yeah. He said, I needed to know this information. And when somebody says that yeah. to you, I mean... It's more common than we realize. Oh, it is. You know, just because we walk around and 
and just like this, doing this show, we're taping this on a Monday morning. And right before we went on the air, we were both sitting here saying, okay, it's Monday morning. We got we to gotta get ready, you know, because at 8.30 on a Monday morning, you know, you just got to get going. Just because we put a <laughs> smile on our face sometimes does not mean we're happy. We're going through the motions a lot of times. It don't matter what. You can be a type A personality or right. B or whatever. But, uh, but there is help like this man that... You lose your mom and dad all in the course of just a, a week or two. I, I can tell you, and I'm a very positive person, that would that would knock me down. Mm -hmm. It would knock me down. And I know a lot of you are nodding your heads uh, to the affirmative right now that are watching this. So um, there is help. There's people that, um, uh, and you're giving me all kind of ideas. I'm not, throw, I'm, <laughs> I'm just absorbing this because... Uh, I, I'm learning a lot right here. Look, let's take a quick break and come back and we'll continue this conversation. Stay with us. We're at Roach Farm and Garden and hunting season is here. It's that time of year. Need to get your food plot going. Carry a full line of Rack Master by Pennington Seed. Wildlife mix, deer mix, peas, oats, soybeans, iron clay peas, and wheat. And for your dove hunters, Milo sunflowers and feed wheat. Even carry Mojo decoys full line of trophy feeders, gravity and spin feeders. And once you get them, you need to have something to put in them. With bulk corn, we got corn on the cob, deer feed from ADM, Antler Extreme and 4S Draw. You will soon need something to cook all the game. We got grills, griddles, deep fryers, not to mention outdoor benches, chairs and fire pits. Keep in mind, we got a full line of Carhartt clothes. Want to make your feet happy? Pick up a pair of boots. We got Rocky, Georgia boot, and Twisted X. Need trail cameras or rechargeable batteries? We got Spy Point, Wild Game Innovations, Plot Watcher, and Stealth Cams. Come check us out. No time to get your minerals out in the spring? You still got time. Roach Farm and Garden carry salt blocks, mineral blocks, trophy rock, vapor, and deer cane. You need a place to sit? We carry Millennium Lock on deer stands and tower stands from Custom Outdoors. Don't forget to pick up some Voodoo Deer Lure. It puts a hex on them. Come see us at Roach Farm and Garden, two locations, Dublin and Wrightsville. Welcome everybody, continuing my conversation with Renee Aver with Cher, right here. Renee. <laughs> but December 6th at 6, uh, and uh, we're continuing those numbers. If you're just joining us, we have numbers on the screen. Uh, that number there is a suicide hotline that uh, you can call. There is always, there's always somebody that's willing to help. I'm talking about 24 hours a day, seven days a week. We were talking about the suicide assist training that we went through. And I want to tell you, when I got home that first day, I was exhausted. <laughs> yes. Julie said, why are you tired? You sit there in a meeting all day. I said, hon, you want... We had to talk this woman off a bridge. We had to talk somebody else off yeah. of, uh, I can't remember, I remember the bridge. And it was real life role plays. And we were trying our best as a group to, to in this situation, talk this lady from jumping off a bridge. And it was so real to me, it was so real to us. But, uh, but to, to learn, you know, what to say, but more importantly, what not to say right. is what I, I got more out of um, out of that training is is do not say this or that. But uh, the training is so important, not only for pastors, but for our homeless ministry or, or your um, your WMU group or, or a group we of call pastors. It, we call it the lay, lay person. Right. Anybody and everybody yeah. can learn the basic skills and the basic ways to handle yourself to help another person um, it's just as simple of being there yeah stop in your world stop and focus on the person and and it's really hard to do that that's hard to do for anybody because we are go 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 yeah. go 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 but it is um also very hard to say james mm -hmm. do you ever think about killing yourself mm -hmm. To say those words is very uncomfortable. Yeah, it's very. So um, once you've said it a time or two, you, you're more and more comfortable. And I share within my training, just to give you a little bit of testimony on it, um, I had to do that with my mom. And it was very uncomfortable. 
I had gone through and learned how to be a trainer for suicide prevention. And my dad had passed and my mom was tired and she was depressed and she was down. And I finally mustered up enough guts and I went in there and I said, Mom, do you ever think about killing yourself? Because she was so depressed and down. And she said, no. But she said, but there has been a time in my life. And if I wouldn't have been brave enough to ask my mom that, mm -hmm. I would have never learned that my mom has struggled with that before. Mm -hmm. And then it was even more beautiful to me that during that time where my mom was like that, she was such a good mom, I didn't even know. She had me so protected. Mm -hmm. I didn't even know that she was going through something. Because yeah, so, she was doing her job as a mom. Yeah, and so even kids, and I say that to say people that you're really, really close to, you might not recognize that they're in that much of a depth of depression or that can, that stressed out that they're not thinking straight that they might can make a decision like that. So this training, QPR, and even while we have our Voices of Hope Suicide Prevention Coalition, is to help us learn just how to show love to each other and help, because life is horrible. Right. Life yeah. is hard. We got to get tough. through it together. Yeah. And why not practice? I'm just throwing this out here. Why not practice on somebody that you know that probably have never thought about killing themselves, committing suicide, I should say. Uh, how about just saying it a few times? You know, practice on your brother, your mom, or your dad. Well, first of all, you may be surprised at them saying, like, your mom, which yeah. is a pastor uh, who who knows the strength of yeah. Of, just like this past week, and I, a lot of you watching right now know me and know this past week what I went through in the loss of a friend, but uh, as I ministered with this family and I thought how bad I was hurting, um, and I look at the, the family and what they're going through, and if I was hurting this bad, my gosh, how could, I, I can't even imagine what they're going through, uh, so I know and, I, and I, I had a friend call me the other morning, and we both were crying on the phone, both of us just crying and talking. I said, let me tell you, uh, I said, all morning I've been in the Word of God, and I kept reading Scripture. Uh, I started out in Matthew in the Beatitudes, and uh, where it says, uh, blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Mm -hmm. And then I went to Psalms, and then went right on through. God's Word will comfort you. There's no doubt. I mean, I can tell you. So your mom, and the reason I say all this, your mom, I know how she believes, and she knows the Word of God will comfort you. But sometimes that don't matter. Human you know, yeah, we Yeah, we're in the flesh, and we, we can't see past uh, going around that corner right there. So uh, we go through tough times. And I know this past week uh, losing somebody, one of the best friends I had in the world, uh, you get down. I don't know if I was depressed but you are, you're, you're so down, you're so, you just can't see past your hurt. Right. Uh, but there are people, like I call somebody, we talked, a, a fellow Christian friend, we talked through it, uh, and we were both devastated. But you have somebody to who talk to. to. Yeah, that's right. And that's what this is. Whereas you're watching here and you say, well, James, you're in another world. I don't have anybody to listen to. Yes, you do. Yes. You do. You do. You do. I'm telling you, you do. Uh, and you can start with that number right there on the screen. That's Suic the first place. The Suicide Prevention Hotline. Uh, and these ladies that trained us uh, were phenomenal. Mm -hmm. These ladies, we had two women, which was... Alosia Hall and Stephanie Dixon. They were with the incredible. Health Link. Yep. Incredible. Uh, just... Uh, so there are people, and, and you say, well, I don't have two days. If you really, I, I was taught, my dad taught us, you do in life what you really want to do. It's what your priorities are. Mm -hmm. And if your priorities are, uh, like with our homeless ministry, our priorities are we want to help people. And people, and, and if you're sitting there saying something negative about suicide, let me tell you from a personal testimony, five years ago, you could not have convinced me that mental health exists. Right. I did not believe mental health exists, and I'm sitting in a mental health building. Uh, <laughs> but I've spent a lot of a lot of hours in this bill or in these buildings around here in the last three years, I guess. But but five years ago, I didn't think mental health exists because I was raised, hey, if something's wrong, suck it up, put on your big boy pants, you know, and and, and a lot and of rock that on. is true. A lot yeah. of that is true. But. Those are good things, but sometimes you can't do that. Right. You need other people. You need someone that you can lean on. 
Um, so, and that's where this comes in. You call that number that you're looking at there. And, and, and I'm telling you, there's somebody watching us right now out of the tens of thousands of people who are watching this show. Somebody sitting there has thought about suicide or you're sitting there now thinking about suicide. So uh, pick up the phone and call that number right there. Listen, we got to take another quick break. We'll be back right after this. Friendly Gus has everything you need this football season. From our everyday value items like a $2.99 two-piece dark meat chicken snack or our fish pork chop three-piece dark or two-piece white meat snack for just $5.50. Friendly Gus caters. Order one of our 20, 40, or 60-piece chicken finger or wing platters. And don't forget the tater logs. Friendly Gus is your one-stop shop for tailgating parties. Our food is always fresh and our service is always friendly. Friendly Gus with locations throughout Middle Georgia. Shop Cochran Brothers Cash and Carry at 320 South Jefferson Street for additional tailgate items like paper products, chicken wings, bulk drinks, spices, sauces, and more. Tasha Rowland and everyone here at the Cloverleaf Restaurant would like to invite you to come try our country style all you can eat buffet. We hold ourselves to the highest standards of safety and quality and the food we prepare for you. We clean our facilities constantly and we offer curbside service. Just call 478-275-2080 and we will have your order ready right away. And Friday is our seafood day. You deserve a great meal. Cloverleaf Caters, call us for your next gathering or event. So treat yourself to the Cloverleaf Restaurant and make sure you're satisfied. We open Sunday through Fridays 11 to 2 with plenty of dining or we can get it ready to go for you. Welcome back everybody. You've seen the show Renee and I have been doing and we have moved locations and actually I actually changed clothes for you for this interview. So <laughs> I have Jessica Brown. Y'all heard us talking about her a little while ago. Uh, we're in her shop here at Emerald Cuts. Uh, right here by the VA hospital, Jessica, which is where on December 6th, right over our shoulders here, just a little ways, uh, you're gonna be speaking. And uh, tell us just a little bit about, first of all, about you and Elise making contact. How did you and Elise sure, meet so and how did that start? It, it's very, uh, very odd, coincidental. Um, I had a stylist who actually retired working with us and one of her clients became a client of mine. Um, I actually shared a video with uh, that client of the video my family created to bring awareness to suicide about my brother. And just so happens that client works with Renee, and, which is Miss Elise. Mm -hmm. And from there it went on to the organization picking up the video and creating an event. And here we are. Yeah, that's wonderful. Uh, I don't think it was a coincidence, I think God God's sure. grace put y'all together there and because so many people, especially men, uh, speaking on behalf of men everywhere, you know, we're proud by nature and we mm -hmm. won't share if we're hurt. Very our, prideful. Uh, I, I just, uh, and I, I hope y'all been paying attention as Renee and I were talking earlier, but uh, don't, don't be scared. Don't be prideful to, uh, to open up and talk to somebody. It don't have to be a preacher. It can be uh, somebody that works, somebody you trust. Right. Somebody you trust, because you didn't invent this problem you're going through. We all have problems. Sure. We may put a happy face on sometime, but uh, as you and I said off camera before we started this interview, we were talking about, said, how you doing, how you doing? And, you know, we was talking about, you know, our aches and pains mm -hmm. of life. It don't do any good to talk about them. You know, most people don't care anyway. No need to complain. But no, you don't want to complain. But tell us a little about your brother. Tell us about him and what kind of person he was. John was a, was 36 years old when he took his life, uh, leaving two kids, a huge family, tons of friends. You, It's one of those instances where after everything took place, uh, you're in complete shock, complete awe as to what happened. He was so full of life, and it's hard to even get into that detail without getting a little emotional. Um, such a fun person to be around, was a huge clown, uh, lit up the room. He had his fair share of problems. Mm -hmm. um, and I think over the years of battling, not I think, I definitely know, uh, he just became weary of fighting. Um, I think he was afraid at some point to reach out, that he would be condemned or judged mm -hmm. uh, for what he was battling. 
And I encourage anyone who's going through that, male, female, adult, child, anyone who is going through anything that way to reach out to somebody, a friend, a coworker. There are more people impacted by this than you will ever realize. We were talking a while ago, we, Renee and I went through a suicide assist training last February, as a matter of this past February. And going through the training, trying to, to talk about the ways to tackle this, but it seems like we have a hard time. And I, d I did this yesterday. I've been trying to practice doing this, but I asked this friend of mine who's been going through a tough time. I just asked, it's the first time I've ever used this, but I just asked lovingly, have you ever thought about suicide? And he just opened up to me. Uh, so it's easy to do it, but maybe practice it on somebody that maybe you might not think they have, but I was actually surprised at the answer to this. Uh, he said, well, I, I don't right now, but in the past I have thought about it. Mm -hmm. So, so many people maybe have thought about it, didn't go through, but I've had so many friends in my life. I've lost um, so many friends to suicide and, and those of us that mm -hmm. are left behind have to pick up the pieces. Sure to it, but uh, I heard the little advice you gave a while ago, but somebody watching us now, out of the tens of thousands of people that are watching us right now on TV, somebody's sitting there thinking, you know, they're exactly right. You know, they're sitting there right now. You're sitting there thinking about ending your life. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not worth it. What do you, talk to that person just a minute. Mm -hmm. I talk to that person as if I was talking to my brother prior to him taking his own life. There's so much left to live for. I'm so sorry to get this emotional. You don't have the right to walk off the stage in the middle of the performance. You're not done. And God has so much planned left for you and everyone around you. I can tell you from a survivor of a sibling, my only sibling, when that person is gone, you leave behind so many pieces for us to pick up. And I pray I never have to see that pain again in the eyes of my parents or in the eyes of his children. I pray you don't leave that pain on anyone else. Um, it's hard not to get emotional. Uh, and my best friend in the whole world at the time, I was 13 when his dad killed himself. And it's still to this day, I don't think a day goes by that sure. I don't think about what we went through, what he went through, and the questions I asked. And, and as a 13-year-old child, I had no answers. Matter of fact, at 60, I don't have answers. Yeah. It's hard. But, um, but going through training, you know, and I ask pastors all the time. I talked to my pastor yesterday. But um, even pastors in seminary, they don't train them how to deal with people. Right. Um, most pastors I ask, what would you do if someone come in your office and was contemplating suicide? And they said, well, I'd talk to them a minute, and I'd probably have to call law enforcement. You know, that they don't know the answer right, to it. Right, yeah. But uh, I wish, and the number's been popping up on the screen here and there, if you'd like to be a part of suicide assist training, call the Community Service Board of Middle Georgia. We're going to be getting another class together soon, and we'd love for you to be involved in it. December 6th at 6 o'clock at the VA. What can people expect? I know you're going to go into a little more detail, but... Uh, people that come, what do you want them to leave there knowing um, once they pull out of that parking lot? Uh, there's two aspects I hope that we accomplish. One, first and foremost, is that anyone who has battled, battling, or considered taking their own life, that this event brings awareness to what happens after that's done, what's left behind, the pain that the, the family has to carry, how much that person is greatly missed. But also, I hope that we bring awareness to the ones that lost the battle, that we touch on those lives, that the suicide did not define them. My brother's legacy will not be known for suicide. It won't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're good. We're excited. Uh, I'm excited. You and Elise, God brought y'all together. Sure. And I pray that he brings a lot of us together. We want you to come. It's on a Sunday evening. Um, a lot of churches aren't having church um, right now in the evening. A lot of people are not having church, period. Uh, but um, we're trying to get back to some type of normal. But uh, we want you to come and be a part of it. It's December the 6th at 6 p.m. Um, and like I said, we're sitting here um, uh, by.
by Walgreens. Correct. Yeah, I'm trying to just think. Just around the corner. That's right. So uh, it's just right back of our shoulder here, right? If you pull in the front uh, front driveway at the VA, you just go to the right. It's, you'll see us. You'll see all the activity right there. So I uh, want you to come out and be a part of it. We're not going to keep you a long time. It'll last about an hour. And uh, we just want you to come be a part of it. We might can change your life, and then you can change other people's life. Suicide is touched. If we've lived any length of time, suicide has touched all our lives. There's not many people that uh, it has not touched, and uh, maybe not on such a personal level as you, but, uh, but I want to thank you for um, it. takes a lot of courage, first of all, to get on TV and talk to 30, 40, 50,000 sure. people at one time. But, uh, but it just it takes a lot of courage to do that. But I can tell um, by your passion that you don't want anybody else to go through this. No, and we need to talk about it so much that the stigma is um, people are aware of of the stigma. We need to speak of it so often, so common that it loses that power, that it loses that sting. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. thank you so much. Absolutely. And thank y'all so much for joining us today.